For the past couple of weeks, we have been in the season of creation. And today, that season of creation takes us to the wilderness. And we got to read that really strange passage from Joel. And as I read that for the first time today, I got thinking about the wildfires burning on the West Coast and about the farmers who are having trouble with locusts this year and how how that passage really might hit home in that context and in the context of what wilderness means. You got thinking about what is all that land going to look like in the West after the fires are all out? Which might not be for a long time. Is that wilderness? What does a few hundred or a few thousand acres of land that has been planted look like after the locusts have cleared it. Is that wilderness? The Bible is not really very helpful um, in, in defining or describing wilderness for us. Adam and Eve got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. We heard about that a couple of weeks ago. The Garden of Eden sounded too nice, uh, too abundant to fit into, I guess, my definition of wilderness. Too, too tame, maybe. Wilderness has the word wild in it, so, so maybe wilderness needs to be wild, and, and Eden just didn't seem to be that. So is that what Adam and Eve and Mabel and Cain and everybody thereafter ended up? Is that where they ended up, was in, was in wilderness? It doesn't sound like it was desert. It sounds like they were going to be able to grow food, um, that they would be able to live, and, and certainly the, the, the Bible story implies that they did and they multiplied and prospered. So wilderness is a desert and yet so often as we go through the Bible that's what we go to in our heads when we hear uh, the story of the Exodus. That whole long uh, many decades of travel that we're told about of the Israelites, the, Hib the Hebrew people traveling around in the wilderness, that story sounds like desert, or at least like a pretty dry, inhospitable place where food would be hard to get or impossible to get, and even one of the stories we have is about how how hard it was to grow food or impossible. And so we have the story of the manna from heaven and water from the rock. Is that wilderness? And then we heard this morning from Matthew the story of Jesus' baptism and then of him going into the wilderness, being led by the Spirit. And I wonder what that place looked like. Was that just a wild place? Or was it a place that was desert-like? Where one's survival because of no food and no water might be in question. 
what is the world to do? When I was 14, living in the suburbs of Toronto, I came up to Algonquin Park to attend a canoe camp. And for two weeks, it was the United Church uh, canoe camp. And we came to meet up at the Opiongo Outfitters on Opiongo Lake. And by the time we got there, my family drove me up, by the time we got there, this city boy thought he was really in the wilderness. But it wasn't the wilderness of the desert that we, we often think about. It was a, a lush, green place where there's lots of water. And you, you all know that place as well as I, or maybe better than I. <coughs> lots of life. <clears throat> lots of food, lots of water, lots of clean air. Um, still pretty wild, for sure. Uh, we had to deal with the bears coming into our camp. That was pretty wild for a city boy. So maybe it, maybe it was wilderness. And I think, too, of the young man that I talked to in Toronto who had come to see me uh, mostly because he was told to. He had tried and failed to commit suicide a couple of times. And he said to me, I spend my life in the wilderness. Indeed, he spent his life in downtown Toronto. <coughs> and the wilderness for him was the city. The city where nobody saw him, where nobody heard him, It was a wild and dangerous place for him. Those of you who watch television may have seen the recent um, advertisement from Cam H in Toronto of uh, silhouettes and voices. Uh, and one voice says, I see you. And another voice says something like, you matter to me. And there's a few other voices, and then finally the voice from the silhouette in the middle says, not today. Implying that not today, he won't commit suicide today. It's, it's a powerful advertisement for how many people, even in a place like Toronto or anywhere, can feel like they are in the wilderness because they feel like they are invisible and that they are in danger. And so, We hear these readings in the context of what we understand to be wilderness. And that's true of anything that we read. We put it in the context of our own understanding. So when we're looking today at wilderness in the light of the season of creation, which kind of implies growth and health and, and, and continuity. What is the wilderness that we're looking at? Two years ago, when I came here and started talking about transition, I put it in the context of the 
people of Israel traveling around the wilderness. And, and how during that time they unburdened themselves of a whole lot of stuff and learned a whole lot of new stuff about who they were and about who God was and their relationship with God and with creation as they moved towards the promised land. And it seems to me that as we read these stories, wilderness is almost always a time of transition. Even in the book of Joel, Joel's talking about change. Change is going to come, Joel says. Look at what's going on. Things are not going to be the same as they used to be. His description of what's going on is pretty horrible. It's pretty wild. It fits in our definition of wilderness. And so as we, as we think about that, as we think about wilderness, what are we doing there? Why do we need the wilderness? It seems to me that a lot of good things, a lot of growing, a lot of really powerful insight can come to us in the wilderness, in the dark places, in the frightening places. So even if wilderness is is a, is a wild place, is, is a place that we can't control, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's that lack of control that can give us the possibilities of moving towards something new. Thanks be to God.
We are alive, we are whole, and we are creatures of a vast and vibrant wild earth. Let us go forth to serve, love, and nourish this world of wildness.